Welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. A lot of you have emailed me and asked me questions about tungsten. More so, what type of tungsten do I put in my TIG torch? And the answer to that is not very easy because there's numerous types of tungsten. And we're going to cover that today and we're going to take out a lot of the confusion. You know, some of the questions are, what types of tungsten are there? Is there color codes that I can identify the tungsten that I have? Uh, who are the organizations that are involved in the tungsten identification? I, I have a machine that's a transformer machine, and for some reason the tungsten doesn't work that well with an inverter. Well, we're going to cover all of that, including MSDS sheets. Now, to start off with, there is a tremendous amount of tungsten out there, but I want to go back in time a little bit and show you the most preferred tungsten that is actually still the most preferred tungsten. And it's called thoriated tungsten. It does have a color code. And the color code right on the tip of the tungsten is red. Now this particular tungsten is great for DC applications. It's great for DC applications on your transformer machine. It's also good for your inverter. Now this tungsten doesn't do a fantastic job on AC, but it's still okay. If it's the only tungsten that you have, you can get by and you can do both AC and DC. Now, it still is the number one tungsten, but we have to ask the question, are we gonna weld aluminum only? And for years and years and years, we preferred the green tungsten. And if you notice, there's a green color code on the end. Well, the green tungsten does work well, and on AC applications, it balls up very nicely. It's not designed for DC at all. So if you accidentally put it in your machine and you're not getting performance, it's because of the tungsten. So here we are, we've got all these different tungstens. We've got thoriated, lanthanated, zirconiated. There's a different percentage of lanthanated. We've got seriated tungsten. So which one works for you? Well, let's go down through the color codes for a minute. The color codes are identified by a couple of different organizations, and I want to uh, speak of those today. One of them is called ISO, or ISO, and that's an international standard organization. Now, just so you know, their color code is not necessarily the same as the American Welling Society, who puts out the other color code. Confusing? Yes, it is. So let's talk about all the different colors and how we can put them together and make it work for you. Just want you to know that we've done that at Weld.com. Weld.com has taken both organizations, combined the color codes, so you can look at it and decide which one you want to use. And I'm just going to read a couple of them from that. Okay, I've got one here. Uh, this is an American Welding Society, and this is a zirconiated tungsten. Now, it's got a brown color code to it, and its useful purpose is for AC. AC, aluminum or magnesium welding, and it happens to work real well. It's, it's tough. It maintains the ball on the end of the tungsten uh, at higher amperages. And when you're using pure tungsten or the green tungsten, it has a tendency to be a little bit weak in high amperages. So again, you can choose and take a look at your application. Now we're going to get into also the machines. What has happened over the years with the machines? We have transformer machines that have been around for decades, many, many decades, and we would prefer certain tungstens to be used on them. Uh, so we have identified red being one of them, green is another one. But you know, the green tungsten doesn't work very well at all on any of the inverter type machines. So we have to create another list, and again, we have combined everything in well.com. Now this is going to be posted on the website so you have direct access to it. All right, now let's get into what's called an MSDS sheet. MSDS will give you all the specifics of each particular tungsten. One tungsten in particular, and it keeps coming back, the number one tungsten is 2% thoriated, or the red tungsten. This tungsten is considered radioactive. Now, what does that mean to you? 
is it radioactive? And the answer is, yes, it is. The thoria is a radioactive element. Now, the real question is, is it radioactive to a level that's going to hurt you? And the answer is no. So feel free to use this. Now, every tungsten that you use in every tungsten known to man is considered a heavy metal. The real concern is breathing the tungsten dust. So when you grind tungsten, make sure you've got good ventilation. You know, another area you need to be concerned is the diameter of tungsten that you're using. I'll give you a couple of examples of what I use in my applications. For example, if I'm welding DC, I'm typically welding with the red tungsten. And if I'm welding with 1 16th diameter, it covers quite a range. I can do some pretty thin materials up to about 100 amps. And once I reach about 100 amps, that tungsten starts to deteriorate. If I hit 125 amps, I can see some deterioration. So I need to stop, change tungstens, go up one size. Now the one size would be 332. Now just so you know, tungsten comes in all sizes. 020, 040, and it just keeps going, going, going. Uh, and there's an overlap. There's not an absolute uh, number that you would always pick. For instance, the overlap on 332 versus 116, you can still do some pretty thin materials with 332, but the 332 diameter will take you up to arguably 150 to 180 amps. That's it for now. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.